In the sediment, on the bottom of a small stream on the foot of an ancient eroded mountain chain, something stirs. But it's neither a spring nor a bubbling mud volcano. No, this eruption of fine particles is beating with the rhythm of life. A small creature is causing the movement drawing in detritus for extracting morsels of food and in the process exchanging the oxygen depleted water that will otherwise suffocate it. Tentatively, it peeks two pairs of antennae out to scan the surroundings for movement. It better be cautious. There is a plethora of predators that will not decline an opportunity to prey on it. We will meet some of them later on. This is a freshwater amphipod. It is a juvenile, about three millimeters body length. So it's on the menu of most aquatic carnivores found in these waters. Amphipods are a fascinating order of crustaceans. They are composed of about 10,000 different species, most of which are found in the oceans. From tropical beaches to the coast of Antarctica, they have colonized the most challenging marine environments, including the abyssal plain and deep sea trenches and they have adapted to fresh water. More closely related to shrimps and lobsters than they are to insects, amphipods are a real evolutionary success story. Some species have even been able to colonize groundwater habitats. In contrast to their closely related cousins, the isopods, amphipods have a laterally compressed body. They also feature two pairs of antennae, Although you would think they have enough other appendages to do it, they also use their antennae for bringing food to their mouth parts. Upon closer inspection, their segmented body almost seems like a Swiss army knife of different kinds of limbs. Their scientific name also hints at that, meaning double or both feet. The first two pairs are formidable claws, which are surprisingly dexterous. Next are several pairs adapted to walking and anchoring, followed by shorter, rudder-like limbs which generate water current, used for burrowing and also for swimming. What sets them apart from most other crustaceans is a structure called a marsupium, a brood pouch present in adult females. We can take a closer look at their reproduction in a future video. Freshwater amphipod species like this are difficult to identify precisely. Their populations are subject to a lot of change, because of new species being introduced into our ecosystems via human activity. In some European rivers, for example, the native species has been virtually replaced with an invasive one some 20 years ago, which is now in turn being outcompeted by other more recent arrivals. And other newcomers are putting in their claims. This North American flatworm species has been accidentally introduced in Europe in spite of being far more primitive than the amphipod from an evolutionary perspective, it is a very capable predator. Without making any vibrations that the amphipod could detect, it creeps closer. And when the shrimp realizes that it is being attacked, it is too late. It tries to escape. In vain. Flatworms have only simple eyes, but they can sense vibrations, and they have an acute sense of smell. So in just a few minutes, others join in to feed. If you are interested in seeing how exactly flatworms feed, you can watch this video. It's quite the spectacle. Speaking of other videos, I do plan to publish more. If you enjoy this content, Please subscribe, hit the like button and share it with others that might be interested. It really helps me reaching new folks that are interested in our tiny aquatic world. But let's get back to the flatworms. What's left behind after they have finished feeding is reminiscent of a crushed beverage can. The amphipod might have a much more sophisticated body structure. It even wears a suit of armor. And yet these soft-bodied creatures lacking even specialized circulatory and respiratory organs, prey upon them. 
Despite scientists having studied these and other small creatures for centuries, there are still new species being discovered, even in Central Europe. But change is imminent. We might lose some of them before they are even known to science. Amphipods are being superseded by others from far off lands. The future might be uncertain for some of our native flatworms too. Their newly immigrated cousins, for example, show a higher tolerance for pollution. Humans might be the ones responsible for the distribution of these non-native species. But we have little to no idea what changes they are going to bring to our ecosystems. Where habitat destruction and nutrient pollution from our agriculture are already wreaking havoc. But there is also hope. We will have to learn to treat our freshwater habitats with the respect that is due. Because after all, we ourselves need clean water to survive. So, at least in my book, a world where there is a place for amphipods is a good world. They might be decimated by predators, but they have been able to colonize virtually every aquatic habitat on this planet where they are performing invaluable services to all kinds of ecosystems. Let us all do our part to keep it that way. The algorithm thinks you might also enjoy these videos.